Sahira am here today for all the new. I'll be sharing three cards with you today which are easy to make. This video is part of a die highlight post and the die that I'm highlighting today is the classic alphabet die set. These alphabets are quite large. I think the widest one is about 3 inches. Uh, they are about 1.9-ish um, um, inches tall. For my first card, I used the alphabets and uh, the layered snowflake die to spell out the word joy. I wanted to keep this card simple and let the dies be the focus. But I still wanted to give the card a bit of character. So in order to add interest, what I did was I cut out several strips of 0.5 inches of uh, white cardstock and adhered them onto my card base. To make the strips stand out a bit, I chose a slightly different shade of white for the strips and pure white for the card base. I will adhere the strips onto the card base with glue tape and cut off the excess from the sides. Next interesting bit is the way I will um, lay the alphabet dies. First I will die cut the J and Y in red once. Then I will die cut the same alphas in green four times each. I will then glue the green J and Y alphas together and glue the red die cut alphas as the topmost layer. So when you see uh, from the top the letters would look red but at an angle the green would show and that looks really cool. This isn't something new but it almost always looks good especially on clean cards. After this I'll die cut the two snowflakes from the layered snowflakes die set in matte silver cardstock. I'll use hot glue to glue the two layers together to create some dimension. I will let uh, the drop of hot glue cool down for a few seconds before adhering the smaller layer on the top of the larger one so that there's some space between them. I'll assemble all the three pieces now. First I glue the snowflake because it's hard to find the center when both your alphas are of different widths. But don't worry about that, the centralized snowflake balances everything. And that is the first card for today. I'm not really digging all those clear drops. I liked it better clean, without the drops. Which one do you like better, with or without the drops? Moving on to the second card for today. This one's simple too, but I thought I'd um, cover the watercolor brush markers along with the classic alphabets. I colored the flowers on this monogram card exactly like I colored the daisies on this card that I shared during the watercolor brush marker release. The flowers are from Always There stamp set. I'll use rubellite and warm sunshine to color the flowers. First I'll add rubellite starting from the end of the petal and move the color inwards towards the flower center but not completely. Closer to the flower center or right next to it I'll add warm sunshine watercolor. I will then blend both or the colors slightly with a water brush where they meet. This will result in a smooth transition but don't worry too much about it, it will look good anyway. I am using the watercolor brush markers directly today because I want a very vibrant and bold result. The watercolor brush markers are really vibrant so it will give you just that, a very vibrant result, even after drying. If you want a subtle shade, I would suggest you go over with the brush marker onto a slick surface like the Altenew watercolor palette, add a few drops of water and then use the dil diluted watercolor to color. You can also add color directly to the outline of the petal and use water brush to spread it around. That will also give you a slightly lighter color. But I'm not too sure, I didn't try this. Maybe just add a very thin outline because these are highly pigmented except for uh, Limeade and Evening Grey. Those two colors are slightly lighter. For the flower center, I'll use Limeade and Moss. To add a bit of fake dimension, I'll first watercolor the entire flower center with limeade and then pick up a little bit of moss watercolor using the same limeade watercolor brush and add the darker shade forming a C shape in the flower center towards the outline. What this will do is give you an illusion of depth. I will use the same two colors for the leaves as well. I'll apply moss to the midrib in a flicking motion and then soften the lines with Limeade watercolor brush marker. I'm going to dilute moss watercolor a bit by smearing some of it onto the watercolor palette. I'll add splatters of this on my card front. 
I am going to add splatters of various concentration of moss watercolor for interest. Next, I'll place all my die cut watercolor images onto the palette and add white paint splatters with the help of pure white ink spray. You can skip this part, but I am doing this to show you how I watercolor the daisies on the card I shared earlier. I went ahead and die cut the letter E twice, layered it up, and now I have adhered it onto the card front with glue tape. I will now arrange the flowers and leaves. These alphabet dies are perfect size to make monogram cards. This card size is 4 by 6 and I think the E fits beautifully on a card of this size as well. You can make wall arts, home decor pieces with these. Make one for your children's room or you can frame this and give it as a gift. You don't necessarily have to make a card. I wanted to make a nameplate but after making three cards I was so done. I hope one of you will mm, make something like that and share it with us. We'd love to see. Now on to my last card. For this one we'll be making our own boutique chipboard alphas. Why am I calling them boutique alphas? You will see that in a minute. So I'm going to die cut the letters Y O U to form the word U. Next I'll use artist marker in rouge to color these die cut alphas. Then I'll use the dainty Swiss dot stem set to add some pattern on these alphas. I'll use clear embossing ink to stamp on the alpha and then heat emboss it with golden peach embossing powder. I'm going to stamp just half the alpha with dainty Swiss dots and I'll go over with Versamark pen on the lower half and heat emboss that portion completely. I'll do this a couple of times to get good coverage. Look at the fancy alphas now. All you have to do is layer this as in stack it up and you have your very own boutique chibot alphas. Now I'll use the creative edges lace die to die cut a decorative element for my card. The addition of this will give the card a more feminine feel. This pretty pattern paper that I'm using is from the celebration paper pack. I'll adhere the lace die and begin assembling the die cuts. For the sentiment I'm using Build a Flower Magnolia stamp set. It has some really nice sentiment stamps. I'm going to use Rouge Dye Ink to stamp the sentiment, pop it on my word U and that's it. I hope you liked the video and picked up a tip or two. That is all from my side today. Thank you for watching. Bye.